Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody is doing good today. Now listen, I know I've been on hiatus, but at some point we're gonna get back to our normal scheduled program. The reason why I wanted to make this video today is because I had to make time for my girl, DZ. You know, just being a moderator on her channel and being behind the scenes with her for the past year or so, those of us who are real ones, and who've been on her Discord, the things that Mammy say about DZ is BS. Now, if you know, you know, but I'll give you a brief synopsis. I wanna explain why DZ is the true divested content creator. Recently, there has been some drama. A BWE who is known for making content about colorism continuously throws shade at DZ while she's minding her own business and then gets mad when DZ responds. DZ, ever since she's been doing lives, she's had the same format this entire time. She will be the one leading the conversation and she has a panel of people that are invited to come up to bring forth their perspective. And then when you throw shots at her, you don't just throw shots at her, you attack her panel, you attack her subscribers, you attack pretty much anybody who would view her as somebody that you can follow. Of course, this woman had another moment where she threw shade and DZ annihilated her once again. She made another follow-up video. And I wanna use the talking points that she made on the most recent live that she did to call her out on the BS and point out the hypocrisy of this content creator. And the fact that she is inconsistent, she was inconsistent in this live by itself. And she doesn't like it when people question her for her inconsistency. The first point that I wanna talk about, this whole talk of stealing talking points. Before I make this point, I want it to be clear that I believe DZ. For me, as far as the whole stealing talking points stuff, although I believe DZ and her panel when they say that this particular colorism content creator steals talking points, I don't think the stealing of the talking points point is relevant. For me, it just goes to show how aligned Black women are with regards to their own individual stories when they're discussing hyenas, mammies, and Blackistan as a whole. Now, are talking points being stolen? Like I said, I explained to you why I have a bias towards DZ. She has not lied once to me or her true followers. But to pretend that Black women are not aligned in the things that they've gone through with hyenas, mammies, and Blackistan as a whole is disingenuous. And when people click DZ's videos, they wanna listen. So that's the first point I wanna make. The second point I wanna make is this whole talk about beef and DZ and channels like DZ's. We're a beef channel. To pretend that this particular col colorism content creator has not had beef with several BWE content creators in this space is ridiculous. Now on this same BWE content creators channel, the one that does colorism, there is another BWE content creator with European cities in her name that also attended. And I believe there was some confusion as to whether or not that page was the actual page of the content creator with the European cities in her name. In other words, the BWE colorism content creator went above and beyond to make sure that it was in fact the BWE content creator with the European cities in her name that was in attendance of her most recent live. But a few months ago, another content creator that likes to put her pinky up, there was a troll that disguised themselves as the pinky content creator. And colorism content creator did not show pinky the same grace that she showed European cities on her most recent live. Colorism 
dragged Pinky to filth to the point where Pinky had to get some sort of technology forensic specialist to prove it was not her. So to pretend that you're not a beef channel, it's giving projection. There's always a beef between the same three individuals in this space. Colorism, European cities, Pinky too. All three of those BWE channels has always had beef with somebody in this space. So to pretend that colorism is not a beef channel is ridiculous. And when she tries to accuse DZ of being a beef channel, it's giving projection. Next point, colorism also in her video made a point about what DZ's panel said when they mentioned that colorism is a black stand problem, which I highly agree and we'll get to why. If the beautiful, deep skinned black women stop listening to these stupid colorism talking points that the colorism content creator continuously makes, her channel goes away. And the colorism content creator herself on the most recent live, she said to that point, even if her colorism content goes away, she can always pivot her message. Thus proving the point that you're inconsistent, are only in this for a bag, that you're only in this to make hyenas mad, you will always be unbelievable. Just by that remark you made, I can always pivot my message. No shit, and you have, because the pro-black wasn't working. And because colorism was getting dragged by said hyenas, her message had to change. Whereas DZ will never pivot. Her message is always gonna stay the same. So it begs to question, are you real? Me thinks not. And me thinks that some of us have a point when that gets pointed out about you. Next point, to the point that white men think that divesters are crazy. To pretend that white men would think that divestment talking points are crazy is just ridiculous. A lot of divestment talking points are aligned with conservatism and which white men are constantly accused of being racist when they hold hyenas accountable when they become a hashtag by way of the police. White conservative men. And so I think that it's ridiculous to think that white men would not agree with what we have to say about Blackistan. Tell that to the white men in our inboxes who are secretly sending us stories to talk about. I have those white men in my inbox. And if I have white men emailing me, I know DZ has white men emailing her. But the point is, is these, these spaces are meant to help black women. Divestment online spaces are just that. We keep it online. We have our safe space to vent. And then when we go in real life, we don't talk about divestment. We don't tell white people we're divested. And we stress that to our supporters. Next point. Now, let's be clear about this chef way situation because we keep being accused of defending this guy for some reason. The point that was being made about the chef way situation is you guys have gone so hard for hyenas. You have done enough damage to the system where they're protected because you guys just can't seem to not care that these hyenas are with other groups of women. The point was when you have situations, for example, in Michigan, where hyenas can literally dump their sisters' bodies in a dumpster and get on some probationary period as punishment because hyenas are protected. But 30 minutes the opposite direction, we have a black teenage girl who got thrown into jail because she didn't do her homework. What do you think y'all are doing with the chef way situation when you've created enough damage for this type of shit to happen? That was the point. There was a white woman who was going hard for chef way even after his skeletons were exposed. What do you think y'all are gonna do? He resigned, which means he potentially can get his job back in the future or get another job somewhere else. You mammies 
have created a situation where the law is soft on hyenas and lets them only serve 10 years when they walk a black woman off the earth, when they can get probation, when they dump their sisters in dumpsters, they can go on some rehabilitation program. But we have little black girls serving time because they didn't do their damn homework. What the fuck do you guys think that you did by having Chef Way step down? That's the point. And when you say things like, oh, keep your options open, but if there's a, ever a good black man that comes my way, I'm gonna give him a chance. But yeah, they do take out black women every five hours. However, I did interview some stay-at-home moms and most of them were married to non-black men, but uh, th there were some that were married to black men. But yeah, they do take out black women every five hours, being inconsistent and confusing people. Who gives a shit about the fact that Chef Wei stepped down when you've created a situation where they're protected, but you wanna accuse us of not having range? You wanna accuse us of not having nuance? Please. So let's be clear about that Chef Wei situation and what was actually being said on DZ's channel. We would never go hard for a hyena on a platform that says the hard ER, on a platform that says hashtag all. Please. Next point. She made a point about the fact that people like DZ and myself and the people that follow her have no place to discuss optics when it comes to black women. And our position is there are no optics. It's simple. Get out of Blackistan, stay away from mammies, stay away from all hyenas because they're all inherently dangerous and put yourself first and be selfish and cape for yourself before you cape for someone else. Any nuance in between that doesn't matter because guess what? Black women are not a monolith. We have black women who are quote unquote elitist. We have black women who are students. We have black women who are single. We have black women who are married. We have black women who are single moms. We have black women who have dippled and dabbled in sex work. Who gives a shit about all those quote unquote optics? There's no optics to be had when we're talking about a very complex, diverse group of individuals with only one thing in common. And that is we are aligned when it comes to our stories that we tell as far as what we went through with Blackistan and hyenas. What optics were aligned? And again, I believe DZ as far as who's stealing whose talking points. Next point, colorism is a Blackistan problem. And I particularly don't have a problem with Black women in luxury movement at large. And colorism is not the only channel who promotes things like that. There's a lot of black women across YouTube, across TikTok, across Instagram that promote black women in luxury. Those women are beautiful. They're gorgeous at the end of the day. I don't have a problem with it. Do you? As long as you're putting yourself first, as long as you're not a mammy, as long as you're not caping for hyenas or mammies or blackistan at large, I don't have an issue with it. I'm for it. Do you? Do what makes you happy. But let's not pretend that this whole luxury and movement and optics and things of that nature are gonna heal black women from low self-esteem, insecurity, or anything else. The best example that I can think of right now is Brianna from The Bachelor. Brianna is gorgeous. And I don't necessarily know if she would be considered dark enough for this colorism content creator, especially when I heard she said Gabrielle Union isn't dark, she's brown. Like what? But let's just keep it real. This is a dark, black, beautiful woman. And when you look at her Instagram, she has every element of the quote unquote, black women in luxury going on for herself. And for the record, I'm very proud of her and I'm still rooting for her. And I hope that as the season progresses, she does better. But homegirl's insecure. She literally got America's rose that kept her safe night one, giving her ample opportunity to just be herself, to just show The Bachelor, I think his name is Zach, what she's working with. 
And he even said, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but it seems like you've got some walls up. I don't know what's happening. Am I doing it? Is it me? Did I do something wrong? And then she wanted to be the one to bring forth drama about another white girl who Zach is having a connection with. And instead of her creating her own connection, she is giving him insecure. That is the best example I can think of right now of why the luxury and movement shit is not enough. In divestment, we're not talking about optics. We're not talking about black women in luxury, even though that's not a negative thing. What we're talking about is healing so that when you are being this black woman in luxury, you're not insecure still. Give them what you're, you're naturally able to give. That black girl magic, we're talking about a gorgeous black woman and America saw it. And I was saying on my community wall the other day, I wish that Brianna could see what we see in her. Because if she did, there would be no insecurity coming from her. Because Blackistan still has a hold on the insecurity of a lot of you Black women in luxury women. Unfortunately, I'm not saying all of you. Next talking point. Okay, the accusations of DZ's followers behind the paid wall doxing people. If I have to hear this shit one more time, I'm gonna lose my shit. That's just bullshit. You're not gonna sit up here and tell me that DZ runs a, a place where we come in doxing, where before she even brings people up on her panel, she makes them turn their cameras off so they don't get doxed for their own safety. So that's bullshit. That's all I have to say about that point. Next talking point. Colorism made the point that DZ still supported her while knowing that she was canoodling with a hyena who supported another hyena that took out another black woman, thus making her disingenuous. I don't know whether or not DZ knew before she was supportive, but let's say for argument's sake, she was supportive. I would say that the reason why she still supported you despite that is because she gave you the benefit of the doubt that you actually changed. But then when you went on to tell your followers, not only are you inconsistent, not only are you confusing, not only are you giving messages that can potentially cause harm to black women, but you also show that you haven't changed and you also threw the first shot. When you told your followers that divesters are extreme and you don't need to follow them, no, you started it. So don't get mad when people finish it. Next point, she talks about how we say the hard ER. I made a video about how there is no difference between the A and the ER when it comes to the N word. Just because it had a different dialect. It's still the same word. Just like how massa and master, nigga and hmm hmm is the same word. So who gives a shit if we say the hard R behind a paid wall? Final point, and this is a bonus point. When you claim you get embarrassed when you're told not to engage with us in the beef, yet you claim to want to change the image of black women and then also claim that the beef gives you good content. And then you say, if people don't want colorism anymore, I could just pivot my message. You're inconsistent, you're fake, and you don't care about black women. You're chasing the algorithm because the pro-black shit wasn't working, which is why you were forced to pivot your message as you say you would do again if people get sick of the colorism talking points. We can see right through you. And the difference between you and DZ is that DZ has not, will not, ever change her message. None of the shit we talk about in black female spaces, whether it's divestment, whether it's black women in luxury, white people don't find any of this shit normal, which is why we say don't talk about it in the real world because we understand that. So anyways, that's all I got. As far as in my defense of DZ, DZ is always going to be my girl and DZ is actually saving lives. So while colorism may have been birthed in white supremacy once upon a time before this country got its shit together and evolved and progressed and white people were done with that to the point where they think people like me are black. If you put me and the colorism content creator together, they're still gonna be like, oh, two black women. That's how you know that colorism is a Blackistan problem. 
and not a white problem. And the fact that you continuously dwell on it proves you still have one foot in Blackistan and you still have hope for hyenas. Anyways, that's all I got for y'all. Um, I'm not going to talk about this shit again. I'm always going to be pro DZ. Go subscribe to her channel. She's the real MVP. So I love y'all. And DZ, if you're listening, I love you. Check y'all on the next one. But one of the divestors said, oh, if uh, dark skinned women stop caring about colorism and stop being insecure, her platform is going to go away. So she needs to keep dark skinned women insecure. And actually, it wouldn't. My platform wouldn't go away. Because I don't just dis discuss colorism. I could go in various directions. I could do level up. I could do self-care. I could do etiquette. There's always a lane for that. Always a lane for that kind of stuff. People always seek out that kind of stuff. People of all races. That's why over on my second channel, my femininity channel, which eventually I am going to revive, y'all. I am. I am going to do it. But I have women of all races over there. So, no, I'm not, like, I know you want me to not be here, right? I know you want my platform to fail, but it's not going to, beloved. It's not going to. I'm sorry. Yeah, I can I can switch lanes, you know? I can pivot into other stuff because that's how I set my platform up. I can occupy other lanes like I've been doing. 